Business leaders should be thinking about the fact that a new asset class has emerged in the last few years uh, called crypto assets. Uh, that should worry them in that there is real potential for disrupting traditional financial rails uh, and business models. They should be equally excited for the opposite reason that there are whole new business models that can be created now. Uh, and that doesn't happen very often. The medium of money and assets doesn't change that often. So when you think of cryptocurrencies, the first thing is it's helpful to call them crypto assets because the word currency is like a head fake. It has a lot of baggage because we all think of currencies. The second is think of them like any other asset class. Asset classes exist to serve some form of organization. So securities serve the corporate form. Uh, bonds allow governments and companies to borrow. Crypto assets, they don't exist for their own sake. Uh, they exist to serve some form of organization. What is that? Uh, quite simply, it's a new model of software. So crypto assets enable something called decentralized software or decentralized applications. And a decentralized application is a software model that has no central operator and no company running that service. It's much more akin to something like the internet or email where it is distributed peer to peer. There are companies that help support the ecosystem, but there's really no one company you call uh, if your email gets stuck on the internet somewhere. It's a set of services, it's a mesh of, of nodes. So in the case of Bitcoin, Bitcoin enables a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment system. Well, is that type of a payment system valuable to anyone? Uh, for many people, Visa is fine, using their bank is fine for wire transfers. But for many people, especially those that live in countries where, for example, their currency might be hyperinflating, or there are severe new capital control restrictions, or where if you donate to a nonprofit, you might go to jail uh, because of political reasons, uh, or you're trying to store your value in something other than gold, which isn't very easy to move around. In other words, there are several real use cases today where providing an alternative means of exchange of value is useful in civil society. It's easy to get caught up in the hype cycles of you know, people are buying and trading Bitcoin. What is it worth? Is it all speculation? Certainly there's a ton of speculation, but if we interrogate what these crypto assets enable, then we can really start to get somewhere and think about the risks as well as the opportunities uh, for entrepreneurs in the financial space. So I often get asked the question, how many cryptocurrencies will there be? There seem to be dozens being created every single day. Are they all going to be valuable? Which ones are going to make it? Or will there just be one like Bitcoin to rule them all? I think there will be something like five to 10 meaningful uh, at scale crypto assets and networks in the same way we have, you know, email, the web, you know, certain uh, uh, file transfer protocols. And the reason for that is the same for why we'll have some diversity of cryptocurrencies in that once you optimize for one particular use case, uh, you tend to make decisions which make it harder for other use cases. So I think the next major milestone is going to be the convergence of you know, existing financial instruments. In other words, the technology itself doesn't lead to a product that you can use tomorrow. That takes uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, and that's where a lot of the opportunity comes from. Uh, but the creation of a new payment method uh, is as much about user experience, distribution, scale, reach, branding, licensing, government regulation, as it is about the core technology. If you're working within financial services, you need to engage now. If you are a potential user of this innovation, you can sit on the sidelines and observe. Uh, but I think for everyone, it's important to break out of the, you know, Bitcoin versus blockchain mindset and appreciate instead what the goal is and how these technologies can serve, serve that end goal. At Chain, a lot of financial executives will come visit us and we'll sit down for lunch. And the very first thing that they'll often say is, Adam, we, we want to do something with blockchain. And I'll say, what problem are you trying to solve? And they'll say, well, we just want to understand if we can do something here. The problem they have is that their boss told them, go do something with blockchain. Uh, usually, 
80% of the time. 20% of the time, they actually know what problem they're trying to solve and they've found the right tool. If you find yourself saying, uh, I don't like Bitcoin, I don't really believe in Bitcoin, but the underlying blockchain technology, wow, there's really something to that. If you find yourself saying that, I would encourage you to rethink that statement. Trying to jump straight to blockchain is a little bit like skipping algebra and trying to learn calculus. Um, teach yourself about Bitcoin, study it, understand it, even if you don't think it's relevant to your business, then move on to how might a, a version of the same data model without a currency be useful. So the bottom line is there's a new trillion dollar asset class and you have to understand it, engage with it, and find the opportunity, but ignore it at your own peril.